Kato, welcome back to another episode. And today I'm going to talk about my top 20 films of all time. What the fuck am I doing? How insane is this? I've, I've had a pile of movies on the floor and I've been going, yes, this one. Oh, this one has to go in. Oh, damn it. And I have gone through about, I don't know, about 150 movies to try to get top 20. It has been nearly impossible. Obviously, there's no real top 20, uh, you know, movies of all time listed as official. This is just my personal picks. A lot of my picks are fantasy and science fiction movies that I grew up with that I love. <sighs> my God, there's so many films, you know, like how can I, you know, list every great movie that's ever come out? It would be impossible to, you know, where's Lawrence of Arabia on the list? Well, as I say, this is just my list and I've narrowed it down to the bare bones of movies that really have had a super impact on me, have really changed filmmaking in general, and are just my top 20 movies of all time. And maybe in the future I'll do a top 100, but my God, who has time for that? <laughs> now, I can't explain every single movie that I'm going to show because this, this would take hours to do, but I just want to talk briefly about every movie and why it is in my top 20 movies of all time. So let's start at the beginning here with a magical movie by a magical man, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, a movie about the human race interacting, uh, having the, its first encounters with aliens. That sounds fucking awesome. It was awesome. As a kid, it blew my mind. And every movie he touched back then was gold. You know, from Jaws to E.T. to Indiana Jones. That was a very magical time for Steven Spielberg. And this movie just opened up my imagination. I was drawing alien ships. I was drawing the mountain where the, the, the meeting takes place. And if you've never seen this movie, just watch it. John Williams soundtrack. Watch. Now, in 1982, my, my father took me to a really surprise movie, a movie that I didn't know that I was gonna fall in love with, and I'd be watching all these years later, but it's because it was a silly science fiction comedy by Terry Gilliam, and I gotta say, Time Bandits is an absolute classic. It's about a little boy with a great imagination, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, these uh, you know, smaller people show up with a map to the universe and they travel through time. And what can I say about Time Bandits? A magical adventure through time, uh, through different time periods. And even Sean Connery is in this movie. And I, I as a kid, I just was so blown away by it. I, I, I honestly, with a soundtrack uh, in there by um, George Harrison, this is a movie that I believe everybody should see and it's it's a little dark that's what makes it cool now terry gillian i mean this guy just absolutely blew my mind brazil brazil about a a world's gone wrong a world gone wrong and the cinematography the story the meaning behind this movie it's it's not for everybody but it certainly was for me it really was this nothing says 1980s like like brazil a movie that I still think was ahead of its time. There's a lot of kind of Monty Python-esque things in there, but very, very dark. Uh, don't go into this movie thinking you'll be like, oh, I'm having a wonderful time. It's somber, it's intense, it's dark, it's meant to be. It's meant to, meant to do that to the audience. And it accomplishes a lot on many different levels that I'm still trying to uh, unravel to this day. Wow, back to the future. How could this not be on the list? I remember seeing this movie when it was first out in the theaters in the 80s. And here's a little story for you. I came out of the movie theater after seeing Back to the Future. No joke. I see this car just driving by the movie theater and there's this kid grabbing onto the car being towed on his skateboard. The movie was already having that much of an influence. That is serious. I can't believe that happened. It's so wonderful to think back and what a testament of the times of a, of a wonderful movie changing culture. I, Back to the Future has influenced so many of us. It's, 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 it has such an imagination to it of time travel and it's a great comedy adventure film with a lot of heart and 
I can't recommend Back to the Future enough. I, the other two movies are okay, but the first one is the one that I love the most. Now in 1984, I saw this movie, uh, God, it must have been about, I saw it four times in the theater, and that was Ghostbusters. I went into the theater as a little kid and I was like, wow. I, all, I, all I ever wanted to be after that was a Ghostbuster. That's all I wanted to be. I, I wanted to, and back in the 80s, you couldn't, you couldn't buy any real merchandise. You couldn't, isn't that so ridiculous how things have changed now? You just, you can buy merchandise before the movie comes out, but I came out of that movie and I wanted to have you know, a proton pack, a, you know, one of the ghost catcher uh, devices. I, you know, I just wanted the whole outfit, everything. I wanted to be a Ghostbuster. I, this is a really funny, brilliant, movie that sometimes it's funny during the filmmaking process when a movie comes together right it's just perfect i mean it was almost meant to be a classic you see every cut every shot every piece of music every the way it all comes together this doesn't happen too often we all know that and ghostbusters a, a real big recommendation there apocalypse now a movie by francis ford coppola a very interesting look into the Vietnam War, uh, a very dark look into it, a very inward look into it, and there's a lot going on here. I've recommended this movie to a few people that have not enjoyed it, they have not liked it, they thought it was too... They said it was boring, and anybody who says the movie's boring, you're not getting it. You're not seeing how deep this movie is. This movie is very, very intense. Uh, <laughs> Marlon Brando's performance of Kurtz is worth the film alone. He was a real pain in the ass in the production of this movie. I could go on about this movie. Eh? Uh, Heart of Darkness, the, the documentary on this movie, is also a high recommendation. It, that, that alone, it, if, even if you don't watch the movie, watch Hearts of Darkness. It's such an incredible documentary on the making of this movie, which is even bigger than this movie. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh, Cinematography wise, I mean this movie was in production for so long, so over budget, and so goddamn worth it. Now, I had read a bit of Lord of the Rings, uh, I think in 1987, and it was very, it was an intense read. It was like, whoa, this is heavy, man. It was very, very descriptive. And then the, I heard there was, there was a movie coming out, and I went to the theater. <laughs> this is so funny. I've said, I said this, I think, before, and I sat between two really large dudes in the theater. It was the only spot I could get. You know, you couldn't pick your seats back then. And I grabbed it and it smelled like B.O. and the movie started and I was in heaven. It was the perfect way to watch the movie. And what got me about Lord of the Rings from what I had read, it was exactly as I had imagined. It was like when I saw Gandalf, it was just perfect. Like I couldn't believe how much they got it so right. And I, you know, and as I said, I hadn't read a lot of the novels, but I experienced Lord of the Rings through the movies. It was through the movies I, I got to experience this amazing story. You know, that influenced Dungeons and Dragons and everything nowadays. Influenced most of my, the, you know, a lot of the medieval movies that I would recommend on the show and stuff like that. Uh, Lord of the Rings, the movies, are a beautiful endeavor and a beautiful love letter to the books. And just, they're so beautiful and they're so wonderfully done and I've gone back to these movies so many times if I'm ever hung over and I feel like crap it's you know we put on the first movie and I just it feels like what Dungeons and Dragons should be you know what I mean but it's Lord of the Rings they did it first it is absolute perfection speaking of absolute perfection it's it's, it's funny this movie is such an emotional movie and it's so it's so I almost felt embarrassed coming in and talking about it, how much I love it but I don't give a, I don't give a shit I saw it in 82 I saw it a bunch of times in theaters and that is ET I couldn't believe how fantastic it was and I have a couple of moments to share with you guys I remember my father coming home and he said hey you want to go see a movie and I'm like yeah yeah I'd always say of course you know what else was I doing when I was eight years old uh, you know and he goes uh, yeah let's go let's go see this movie so it's about an alien or something it's about a kid that meets an alien and I'm like really and I anything to do with aliens back then was okay by me and he's like yes yeah, something like E.T. the extraterrestrial or some unusual name I'm like what I, I at the time as a kid as uh, extraterrestrial I'm like what is it what, what is that was that and I went to see the movie and um, 
and it, it emotionally hit a generation, didn't it? It hit my generation so much, and I've seen the movie countless times, and I hadn't watched it in a bunch of years, and I watched it with Kim, and Kim was like, she was choking up at certain scenes in it, and even I was like, I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm choking it up too. That's the testament of E.T., uh, a great movie by the magical Spielberg at the time. Now this, I'm grouping all these movies together. It's the first uh, four that really, and, and six, not number five. The original Star Trek movies. I this I grew up watching them. I love the very first one. I know it's a little long for people. Then I saw Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan in theaters. Whoa, holy shit. Everybody in school back then, we, we couldn't believe how fantastic The Wrath of Khan was. And then, you know, we got The Search for Spock and then The Voyage Home is one of my personal favorites. Five is a little bit of a, a flubber, but six brought it back. And uh, I just want to talk about the original movies and they, they have to be on the list. This list was difficult. Army of Darkness though, had to be in there. It, it had to be, I love Army of Darkness. Bruce Campbell was a god to a generation. <laughs> And what is this This movie? This, this If you've never seen this movie, this Halloween, search out Army of Darkness and watch it with your friends, by yourself, your significant other. I don't care with your dog. I don't care an invisible person. Watch it. Army of Darkness is just a lot of fun. And that's the best way to sum this movie up. It's a lot of fun. It's comedy. It's... It's a, a little bit of horror in there, a tiny small amount of, you know, but it, it's just good fun. And Bruce Campbell's character is, I'm not going to ruin the movie for you, please, just go and see it. It's, it's a good time from beginning to end, and I'm putting it over here. This is one I'm going to watch on Halloween again. And here we go, The Matrix. I remember going and seeing this, and I remember I was not looking forward to seeing The Matrix. I was like, oh... Oh, some movie where they're not living in their reality. It's something, something like that. It's a, it's an. I kind of thought it was like, the reality was in a. I, I was kind of right in a lot of ways. I was in a computer program, but I had no idea to what extent. And me and Rob went to see it, and I was blown away. I hadn't been that blown away in, in years. And me and Rob walked out of the movie. And we're attack, we're kung fuing each other, attacking each other. We were so moved by that movie and. You know, when the, the, the big reveal point comes in and when you find out that people are actually energy and we're living in this gigantic computer program. I was in the theater. I was like, I cannot believe this is happening. How are we, how are they ever going to win about, you know, against this? And, you know, I got a little shivers thinking it. Like, it was an awe-inspiring moment. And yeah, the next two movies, you know, the, the second one is, is, is okay. The third one is uh, okay-ish, but the first one is a movie classic for all time, The Matrix. Now, a, a lot of these are science fiction fantasy movies, but this one is grounded in a lot of fun reality on this planet, and that is The Godfather. Every Christmas, I try to watch this trilogy. I try to watch it, and I know a lot of people don't like the third movie. The second movie is so dark, it's intense. If you, if you need to just pick one, just watch the first movie. Just watch the first movie on its own like that. And a great, <laughs> a great thing about The Godfather, about gangs back in, you know, the, the olden days of, of America. And oh boy, there's so much to talk about. Marlon Brando in here and, you know, Al Pacino, the acting performances. It's, I could spend hours talking about The Godfather, about how deep it is and how much meaning is there and how well it was shot, how well it was done. And Francis Ford Coppola, he got to make Apocalypse Now, The Godfather. Watch it, love it, endure it, uh, you know, appreciate it for all time. Show your kids, show anybody. Now, the next couple of movies are, I, they're, they're, I love the sequels as well. And that is, first of all, The Terminator. I saw this in the movie theater. I was so stoked. And it was, I remember the funny thing, it was a little theater. When it first opened, it was a theater just by where I lived uh, when I grew up in North Delta, in Vancouver here. And we, me and my dad went to see, my, me and my dad had a relationship of watching movies. He'd always take me to the movie theater and we watched everything and I was watching movies that I shouldn't have been watching. A lot of times, I was a younger guy, but 
there wasn't the stigma that there is now. Like, oh no, you can't see that movie. My dad just threw me into everything, and I it made me the person that I am today. Uh, you know, for sure. But I we watched Terminator, and it it was fucking so awesome, man. I mean, the robot that didn't stop till it got its target. The robot from the future, and you know, with Reese and uh, you know, you know, stress up, you know, John Connor. Oh my god, the, the, I could go into hours. That's the problem with this. I, I start talking about a movie and I love it so much that I want to get into such detail. It was, it's such a wonderful story by James Cameron, which, you know, if a lot of people don't know that James Cameron supposedly stole this story from somebody else. Yeah, like, and he, he claimed it as, on his own, but you know what? Who gives a shit? This was a great movie. And then Terminator 2 was... A, what, like Terminator 2 is almost better than Terminator 1. Now you don't get many sequels like that and only when James Cameron was in his ma you know his magic days back then and you know obviously there's more Terminator movies after that but for me it will always be Terminator 1 and 2. Great classic films. Speaking of great classic films Arnold Schwarzenegger again. Conan the Barbarian. A movie I saw in the very early 80s I must have been eight years old when I saw Conan. I still have, I've watched this movie like a hundred times. It was always on television. It was always on like a Saturday afternoon. I'd be like, oh, fine, I'll watch Conan again. God damn it. My life is terrible. Conan is a wonderful film of revenge. That's all it's about is revenge. I, if you've never seen it, just fucking watch it. Trust me. I'm, these are my recommendations. I should just say, watch it. I, I I hope I've gained enough trust with you guys over the years. Oh, Conan and the Destroyer is fun as well. In a much more funnier Dungeons and Dragons comedy adventure way. Now, how could Indiana Jones not be on there? Again, 1982, my father comes home and says, Hey! There's this movie called Raiders of the Lost Ark or something. Like, I'm thinking about going and seeing it with your uncle. Do you want to come and see it? And I'm like, yeah, okay. And this was a movie that me and my father walked out of. And I, I'll never forget it. My, my, this is so unusual for my dad. This was very unusual. We walked out of the movie after seeing it. We were blown away. But my, this is what my father was repeating over and over and over again. He just kept saying, holy shit, that was a good movie. Holy crap, that was a good movie. And he said it like 10 times on the way to the car. He was so blown away, we all were. We all were so blown away by that first movie and you know, Temple of Doom came out and The Last Crusade came out. Those are the only movies I wanna, wanna remember. But that first movie with the Ark of the Covenant, I, I've seen it in theaters a couple of times since. You know, uh, I, I took Kim to go and see it. It was showing in theaters down the road from us a couple of years ago. We went to see it, and it holds up so well. I mean, to think that Tom Selleck was going to play freaking Indiana Jones, that's insane. I can't imagine anybody but but uh, Harrison Ford as that role. Oh, Indiana Jones is one of the best films. Oh, ah, it's so good it's jumping out, at, <laughs> out of the case at you. Alien. Alien 1, Alien 2, and uh, yeah, that's about it for me. The first Alien was so creepy and so surreal. I saw it at a sleepover uh, back in the early 80s, and I was like, oh my god, it was so terrifying. Back then, I saw so many terrifying movies. <laughs> they gave me nightmares, but I liked having nightmares. They're good for you, I swear. And then I saw, you know, years later, the sequel, which was Aliens, and what a wonderful film. It's, you know, the first one is about an alien. The second movie is about aliens. Uh, a, a few more, but what a great world setting Ridley Scott created. I mean, that first movie and, you know, it's unfortunate, like, you know, Prometheus came out and it's got its flaws. It always kind of upsets me that the space jockey has kind of been ruined for me in the first movie. Every time I see it now, I think of that big white, you know, marshmallow man walking around. I'm like, oh no. But I still try to, you know, enjoy watching the first Alien movie and pretending that that didn't happen. That this was just something so surreal. And I think that's what I'm trying to say here is that the first, you know, Alien movie was so creepy and so surreal that, you know, that the Alien ship was I know it sounds so stereotypical. Alien. We didn't understand it. We never would. That's part of the mystery of the first movie. Uh, was that with the space jockey? Was the mystery? What is this ship? What is the cargo? What is this about? It made it 
almost more cooler that there was no explanation for it. And I, I hate that sometimes in modern movies where we feel we have to explain everything. I think let's have some mystery and uh, and still, you know, and, and you know, James Cameron did an amazing job on Aliens. Great stuff. Here we go. Star Wars. Now, as you know, my favorite Star Wars movies are 4, 5, and 6, and now 7. They changed my life. George Lucas, honestly, I know he's taken a lot of bashing for episodes 1, 2, and 3. And those movies I'm not a huge fan of. But George Lucas created Star Wars. He created a world that changed so many of our lives. And he... I can't say... But when I was in, the, you know, because I grew up in the late 70s, when I saw Star Wars, it opened my imagination. I don't think I would be who I was today if it wasn't for Star Wars. That's how big of a deal it made on my life and on an entire generation out there. And, you know, collecting the toys, imagining my own stories and creating my own imagination, you know, like my own. It, it really boosted my imagination. I think that's what I'm trying to say. It boosted my imagination in a way that I, you know, to tell my own stories and to do my own things in life. And and I thank George Lucas for creating Star Wars, one of the greatest movies of all time. Really, it, it, it's just, it's more than just a movie. Isn't it so funny that all these are just, oh, these are movies that are shot for shot from a story, from a script. But sometimes magical things happen and a movie like Star Wars is created that will change, you know, changes our lives. And I think will change the rest of popular culture forever. Who can say that? And who can ever say that they created a movie that changed popular culture and popular culture forever? And that's why we owe George Lucas so much for Star Wars. Wow, what a film. Okay, we're down to my top three movies of, you know, out of 20 of all time. And this is a very, <laughs> this movie, for those who have seen it, and those who have seen it, uh, you know, back then, back in the 80s, love it. And it, it's confused a lot of people. I've recommended this to a lot of people. I was on a podcast, The All Gen Gamers, years ago, and I recommended this movie. And a lot of people came back and they're like, what the fuck? What the, why would you recommend this movie? And a lot of people were like, this movie is incredible. This movie is so surreal, I could spend an hour and a half talking about it. The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension. The title alone is fucked up, and this movie came out in the mid-80s, and a lot of people never saw it because it was in the movie theater for, I think, a week, and it was gone, and nobody ever heard about it again. But I had, I had you know, I had read the comic book adaption by Marvel, I was so excited to see the film and I couldn't see it anywhere. And then I had to wait a long time before it came on VHS and my family had beta. So for me to rent the movie and I watched it and I don't know if it was where it came out in the, in the mid eighties, where it was, you know, sci-fi was in the mid eighties. But if anybody was there at that time, Buckaroo Banzai was a life changing, unusual uh, masterpiece. It was just so, insane that it was brilliant and it is insane this movie is ridiculous and it's about a scientist who's also a samurai who's also a brain surgeon who's also a rocket scientist uh and you know who's also in a band uh there's so many things going on in bucker bonds like the president of the united states phones up bucker bonds i for for advice in this world and a lot of people part of my generation love this movie like Ernie Klein who wrote Ready Player One and Kevin Smith you know of Clerks fame they adore this movie and I you know what's so funny about those guys I I talked to Ernie Klein uh, we had him on the podcast years ago and he had written a sequel the sequel that we always wanted to Buckaroo Bonsai like, he had written it he had actually wrote it which is unreal and Kevin Smith is creating I believe a TV series to Buckaroo Banzai now, and that's uh, that's crazy, man. What a weird time to live in. And you know, I was nervous about this movie because you know, to my wife, I I wanted to show her this movie because it's in my top three of all time, and I I showed her it, and I was like, I said to her, I said, you know, it's a little bit older, just don't be too brutal on it. And I said, you know, the great thing is she loved it. She th she's like, wow, this is this is a lot of fun. This is a a fun movie, and I was like. 
wow, you know, like, some people who get it kind of get it, and those who don't just don't, <laughs> you know, and I recommend the movie because it's nuts. This movie is absolute science fiction insanity, and there's so much going on that that's what makes it so cool, is there's so much going on, and John Lithgow as, you know, the, the, the head of the alien... Uh, race, uh, the, the, the kind of Hitler of this alien race is just brilliant. Down to my top two films of all time. Now, here we go. I spent an entire episode talking about why I love this movie, so I'm not going to go on and on about it, but Big Trouble in Little China is incredible. Please check out my 25th anniversary video on Big Trouble in Little China. I go into great in depth, you know, I go greatly in, in depth of why I love the movie, why the movie was so awesome, the great acting performances, the hilarious acting performances of Kurt Russell into a kung fu crazy. Uh, oh my, like there's there's so much going on. Please check out my review of that and and please watch the movie Big Trouble in Little China. You will, ho you will hopefully thank me. You will hopefully thank me for it. Now, a lot of you might have already seen it sitting here. A movie that I was at the right age to watch, but should I have watched? Maybe not. Maybe I was a little too young for it. But my dad, being the freaking amazing man that he was, took me to see this movie, Blade Runner, in 1982. Blade Runner is my favorite movie of all time, hands down. It hasn't changed since then. There's been a lot of great movies over the years. There's been a lot. There's hundreds of great movies. But Blade Runner, in the cinematography, the acting, the world setting, the music, the acting performances, this solidified itself as my favorite film. There is, it's a bleak future where mankind is, you know, the earth has become so polluted that really you want to go to off-world colonies and live now because the, the earth is such a horrible place. It's constantly raining. It's, it's overpopulated. It's super, you know, it's very, very dark and it's wonderful. It's, it's a really wonderful setting and uh, in this, uh, you know, world setting, a company, uh, the Tyrell Co Corporation, has created almost an entire race of uh, replicants. And that is, really, they look like us, but they're artificially created people. Androids, if you want to call it that, but they're not mechanical. They're physical. And <laughs> I'm even quoting the movie now. I know this movie and can quote this movie inside out from beginning to end, backwards, forwards. I've never seen a movie as many times as I've, as, as I've seen Blade Runner. I've studied the movie in-depthly. I could recite any scene at any given moment and tell you what was going on in the colors and in the shot for shots. And It's a brilliant piece of filmmaking created by Ridley Scott. And I have never, ever been more taken back by a film than I was Blade Runner. Then to now. It changed my life, honestly, and you know, one scene that I remember was when Roy Batty was squishing in Tyrell's eyes in the movie. Yeah, that scene, the, eye, the classic squishing in the eyeball scene. It was so horrific. As an eight-year-old boy, I remember sitting there going, oh, it was like, I, I remember just being like, I didn't even speak. I was like, I, it was so disturbing, but you know what? I gotta say about seeing some horrific scenes and mature content and movies and all that, it, I, I say, saying it again, it made me who I am today. You know, I, I, I recommend, you know, I, I, <laughs> it worked for me. Maybe it was that my parents didn't really know how horrific some of these movies were going to be or how much uh, adult content was in them. And to be absolutely honest, I don't really think my my parents really cared. I don't think they really said, oh, it's a movie. It's just a movie. And it's, you know, and little did my dad know when he took me to see Blade Runner that it would change my life as well, you know, just like Star Wars had. And, and that's the thing is that movies are not just movies to me. They're not just like, oh, it's got a bit of fun and I move on. Movies are that way for a lot of people. For me, they're like a deep religion. And 
they, for our culture, they have done so much, haven't they? It's just, and it's not only the the visuals, it's the characters, it's the music, it's how all the shots come together and create brilliant pieces of art. And film is art to me. It really is. And it is a crying shame that I could only pick 20 today because there is thousands of movies that I've seen that I absolutely adore. And guys, I just wanted to come in and share some of my favorites, of, uh, you know, favorite 20 movies of all time. It was a hard list to come up with. There's a lot of other movies I wanted to include. I should have just come up with a, <laughs> a video saying all the movies I wanted to have in my top 20 movies of all time because it was that tough for me. So anyways, guys, until next time.